complex numbers start so very, very simple. Like, oh, I, can sh I just add things, right? And I multiply terms by each other. When you transition to mod arg form, though, things get a lot more difficult, right? For a good reason. Like, as you start to see, mod arg form is, is packed with insights, and it's a much more powerful way to describe numbers. But therefore, it kind of, you know, you have to have all of this trick stuff, like, sifting around in the background, and it doesn't hold your hand through it, okay? So this is harder. This is where complex numbers, we're kind of at the, um, Oh, you guys don't, don't know what this is yet. We're kind of the inflection point where it's like just really Ooh. ramping up, okay? But um, it's worth it. So hold on to your hats. Now let's remember, if I've got two complex numbers, like so, the last thing we were spending most of our time on was multiplication, right? And in mod arg form, what multiplication looks like. So if this is Z1, this is Z2, let's just rehearse. The product of Z1 and Z2 is, okay, what do we do with the moduli? R1. We multiply the mods, right? So R1, R2 is going to be hanging out there in the front. Uh, that's the modulus. What do we do with the argument, with the angles? Right, we multiply mods, we add R's, right? So I get cos of alpha plus beta here, right? And then you've got your plus I sine alpha plus beta here. Okay, so as you've seen, we multiply mods, we add arcs. Now, that pushes on things a little bit because you might remember we defined um, complex numbers as kind of like translation, right? And then when you add complex numbers, you're, you're shifting around just horizontally and vertically, okay? But when you multiply, we said rotation is happening. Yes, rotation is happening. But when you look at this, if you think about this carefully, you realize, and we've already seen examples that demonstrate this, that more than just rotation is happening, right? Rotation is just about like going round and round and round. So that has to do with the angle, right? That's what rotation is. But something is happening here as well, right? The magnitude, the size of the complex number is also changing, okay? So there's more than just rotation. The way that I remember it is that when you multiply, um, multiply complex numbers, you not only Rotate. Don't just think about it in terms of rotation. But you do two things. Come in. You do two things. Number one, you multiply these mods, which geometrically means, for instance, if I had a number like, say, let's take uh, Z1. Let's take a simple example like I. Okay. So you know where that is. It's on the purely imaginary axis. Okay. Now, if I multiply that by another simple complex number, like say two, right? Uh, no rotation is happening, okay? Why is no rotation happening when I multiply by two? Because you're multiplying by zero. Adding by zero. Because what's the argument that I add? What's the argument of two? Where is two? Two's right there on the real axis, right? On the positive real axis, I should say. So its argument is zero. Now, there's the rotation thing happening, or as it is, not happening, okay? But what else happens to it? Well, obviously, yeah, Z1, Z2 is 2i, right? So there was i before, right? Once you multiply by 2, you've got 2i now, and it's twice as far away. The, um, the modulus has doubled, okay? So the way I remember it, there's just, there's just so much awesome alliteration that, hap that happens in complex numbers. Um, not only are you rotating, you're scaling, right? You're scaling, and when you think about rotation, your, um, your old timey simple word for rotation is spinning, right? You're, you're turning something around, you spin it. So multiplying is not just rotation. It's more than rotation. Uh, I remember it as it's scaling and it's spinning. That's what multiplication means. Okay. Now, uh, we established this, we demonstrated it through the trig identities, okay? But I want to have a look at some of the implications of this that, that come out a little bit more, okay? Um, you can also do this in reverse. Do you notice that? Like, I'm thinking of this from the point of view of, okay, I know what my complex numbers are. Tell me how to combine them, okay? I can go in reverse and I can say, if I've got something which is clearly a product, they're already combined, can I come backwards, right? So for instance, uh, let's think about these things one at a time, right? Uh, let's think about the <coughs> modulus of Z1, Z2, right? If I already have the product worked out for me, okay, then based on the fact that I multiply moduli, right, I'm multiplying the mods, then the modulus of this is clearly the modulus of this times the modulus of this, just by itself, right? So I'm sort of going in reverse now, okay? This is like, I know the numbers, now I'm getting the product. This is 
if you know the product, can you can you glean some insight from it by trying to go in reverse, trying to reverse engineer things? Okay. That's multiply mods. What about the argument? Uh, I'll go with lowercase actually. If multiplying mods gives me this relationship, then if I have this and I know that this is a product, right? What can I say about the argument of the product? Okay, so I've got this argument, that's one of them, right? There's the first angle, plus the other one, right? Okay, does that make sense? Now, there are some, uh, there are some special cases for these, uh, what we call identities, right? That do not change either the modulus or the argument. And we had a look at a, a one just a second ago, okay? Uh, let's have, actually, let's have a look at this one, right? So you remember, I multiply by two. I multiply by two, right? So what happened to the argument in this case from the original number to the product? And the answer is the argument didn't change. Why didn't the argument change? It's because the argument I was adding was zero. Does that make sense? Okay. So here's my, um, here's my particular example. If, um, let's introduce, say, let's call it omega. Okay. If the argument of some number is zero, Right? Sorry, that's the wrong one. It's the second one. <laughs> I think that argument's right there. If the argument of omega is zero, then the argument of anything times omega will be unchanged. Do you see that? Right? Because the argument I'm adding will be arg zero, right? Sorry, will be will be zero. Okay. So therefore, this is just unchanged, just like it was here. Right. But hold on a second, what does it mean? What kinds of numbers? There's a whole family of numbers that has an argument of zero. Where are they? Like two is one of them. The real it's the, the real numbers, numbers, but more specifically, it's not just the real numbers. There are only some real numbers. It's got to be the positive ones, right? Because if I think about my complex plane here, right? I start measuring from the positive real axis. These numbers over here, like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, they are also real. They're real numbers, but their argument's not zero. What is the argument over there? It's pi radians, right? So therefore, that would quite significantly change the argument. So that's what I've got here. If the argument of omega is zero, in other words, if omega is a positive real number, okay, then when you multiply some other complex number, right, its argument doesn't change. Okay. Whoops, I should have written that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Keep on bucking this up. So you should have done the modulus first. Yeah, I should have. But I was, only, I was picking up off this example. Okay. Now, I'm going to think about this example now in reverse. Okay. Let's think about 2 multiplied by i, okay? which is like, well, hold on, isn't that the same thing? Well, I want to think about now, what numbers do I multiply by that leave my modulus unchanged. Do you notice the modulus of this number and this number are the same, right? 2 and 2i. Two here's 2 and here's 2i. They're the same distance. The modulus is unchanged, okay? So how would you say this, right? What particular kinds of numbers? Yeah. When it's like an imaginary number. Okay, so if... Now, the particular example I've chosen is i. Can you think of another number I could multiply by that would not change the modulus of the number that I multiplied by. One would work. Yeah. Right? Two times one will still be two. Give me another one. Another number which I can multiply by and it wouldn't change negative the modulus. Yeah, I've got one so far and i and negative one. Come on, have a look. Negative Give me another one. I. Negative i would do it, right? In fact, because I am multiplying the moduli here, right? Anything with a modulus of one, right? Anything with a modulus one. If you multiply that, <laughs> then the modulus won't change because you're multiplying by 1, right? So I'm going to say if the modulus of omega is equal to 1, right? Then the modulus of any number multiplied by omega, it won't change. Okay? Let me read that again, okay? So you're, not, you're, not, you're trying to see, like, what? it's like getting pretty notation dense, right? If you've got a number and its modulus is what? That's how far away it is from the origin. Then if you multiply some other complex number by that number that's one away, right? It won't change your modulus, right? Of the modulus of uh, z omega will still be z. Okay. 